Wow. I feel humble. It's kind of hard for me to preach up here after that message. I think that's some of the best preaching I've ever heard. How about you? Amen. That's got to be some of the... Come on, give God some praise. Over here on the side here. I'm going to be pushing buttons with my Bible here. All right. No, we don't want to do it again. This is enough. We had enough. But I do have scripture. You have my scripture up? Yep, it's up. Yes. Is that me? Well, that is me. Can you see that here? Somebody say praise God. Praise God. Is it a happy day? Oh, yes. yes. Who's not happy? Satan. <laughs> Robert wrecked his car yesterday. He's still smiling. Look at that. My wife is in New York and I'm still smiling. When you talk about good sex, wait till my wife is with me. Would you help me? Boy, I tell you, it's difficult. You talk about great things and then your spouse is not with you. But give me a couple hours. She'll be here. I'll be smiling bigger then. We'll be, everything will be all right. Aren't you glad you serve a great, great God? Yeah. Come on, give him some praise. I talk so little when I see you know, the word telling about how much God does for us. And you know, Father said even if we could do 5%, and even 4.5% of that, 4.5 of that is just following God, being obedient. And we only really got 5% or 0.5% of really active Hard work, the rest is just being obedient and walking with God. You wake up in the morning, you walk with God. During your day, whether you're in school or your job or with your family, what do you do? You walk with God. You see, what we have here is not a church, not a denomination. What this is, this is a daily walk. How do you walk? I walk with God. When things don't go your way, how do you walk? I walk with God. When you wreck your car, what do you do, Robert? Walk with God. Walk with God. When your husband's dead at you, Lucy, what do you do? I don't know. She didn't answer that one. She said, I got something else on my mind. No, I'll take care of him, right? Let my wife not here. She'd answer, I'd get out my nine millimeter is what I would do. But what we're doing here, this is a walk with God. It's not a it's not a job. Someone said, Well, how do you you know, we work so hard, we've been doing so many things every day, day in, day out. People say, how do you live with such a job? It's so hard. No, I don't have a bad day in my life. Every day is good because it's not a job. It's a walk with God. What kind of walk do you have? Is it a happy walk? I have to keep saying to this guy when he's leading the songs, smile. He looks like he's in pain. Oh God, I have to sing this song. Oh. And I'm going, smile. I mean, it's just, he's concentrating on the song. <laughs> smile. And we'll get that down back, won't we? Or was that you? You smile pretty good to see you. But notice what the scripture says here in 2 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 5. Can you see it up there? Let's read that first line. That your faith, what? What about your faith? faith. Oh, should not stand, where? In the wisdom of men. But your faith, what happens when your faith stands in the wisdom of men, but in what? In the power of God. In the power of God. Now, when, when Father gave us the principle, did you get 12 men and women to sit down and get their opinions? No. <laughs> if he did, we'd never have a principle, would we? We'd, they'd still be working on the principle because they'd be fighting in that room till today. They all would have lost weight. They would have sweat to death. Uh, but, but, you know, Father didn't look for any man. He looked to God. When he was a young man, just a young boy, there wasn't a council that got together and voted him to take his position, was it? Who talked to Father to put him who he was? We talk, he talked to God. Our walk is not man-made, it's God-made. If anything we do that's a man, what, the wages of sin is death. And there's a road that men choose, and that's the gift of, or the way of what? Destruction. So don't let your faith stand in what? The wisdom of men. But in the weakness. Uh -uh. Power. Can anybody read up here? Power. power. Don't stand in wisdom, but in the weakness of God. In the power. Listen, folks, we, we ask, we question whether God can do this. Whether he's, I don't know about you, but I don't serve a weak God. I don't serve a shy God, but I serve a powerful God that's overcoming to every obstacle. A powerful God that can wake me up in the 
body. He can keep me from sinning all day long. He can keep my life pure. He can keep my, my walk straight. Well, you know, I don't think I can walk this way. I don't think I can keep up with this walking. You know, you don't hear people say, well, the way with God is so hard. <laughs> you know why the way with God is so hard? Because you're walking by yourself. You're walking a lonely trail. But I'll tell you what, when I wake up in the morning, first thing you do, I get a hold of God's arm. And, and you know, I really don't walk on my own, brother Lowell. You know what it's like. You can't walk this road by yourself. You're going to fall down if you walk by yourself. You're going to stumble if you fall down. But someone said, well, I didn't need to, but I fell into adultery. What was it, a hole there? You just fell into it? No, you were walking alone. If you were walking with God, with God in your presence, you ain't going to fall out of sin. You ain't going to fall into adultery. You're not going to fall into drugs and alcohol. No, when you walk with God, you walk a pure, straight walk. Hallelujah. Our, our walk is not made up of men. As a matter of fact, when Father received the principle, he found it in a cold, cold Dungeon of a room in a prison. And we say, God, how could you allow that to happen? He probably didn't allow it as much as he provided for it to happen. Because there has to be a place. If we're going to hear from God, we need to get in the place where we have no influence from anybody else. Hello? If I'm going to hear from God, I don't need, I'm going to be very open. I don't even want to be influenced by my wife. I don't want to be influenced by my best friend. I don't want to be influenced by my boss, my co-workers. I don't want to be influenced by the government or the government's laws or their rights to come and take my house, my freedom, and take everything away. When I want to hear from God, I want to just be alone with Him. And so God took Father to a prison cell. To give him the undefiled, unchangeable, true love, true life, and true lineage that has touched how many lives today? How many have been touched by the principle of God's word in your life? Yeah. In my marriage, my life, with myself. You know what? I like myself better. I usually didn't think too highly of myself. <laughs> Some of you don't think too highly of me either. I can see the expression <laughs> on your face. <laughs> There's, when I said that, you said, yeah, I'm with you. I don't think too much of you anyway. <laughs> really, I don't care. Well, I, I shouldn't use the word don't care. I don't mind if you don't think too highly of me, but you've got to respect the God that is in me. Can I say that much? Yes. Hallelujah. I, I love Bishop Stolle. I love how he greets new ministers. You know what he said? He says, the God in me greets the God in you. That's not like George. I love you, Brother George. You see this? Now? I love you, brother. Come on down and preach a little bit. We can get together. Get a little salt and pepper. There's good, good, good seasoning in the food. <laughs> Give God some praise. Look at this. Your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Everybody say power of God. Power if your faith is in the power of God, you never go wrong. If your faith is in Congress, then they vote you out. They'll vote themselves a raise, but they'll vote you out. They'll vote new freedoms to come in and take over your home, but your freedom will be taken away. So how many want to put your faith in Congress? No way. Now thank God they can pass along. How about the president? I think, uh, who did we give those five terrorists to? Qatar. We went back to Qatar. Qatar got cheated. Qatar cheated. Only getting five? They should have got six. Obama should have been one of the six in there with them. If we traded Obama with the five and he could do as much damage to them as he's done to us, we might get out of this mess. Please don't let this get out of the room. I'll be in jail, I'll be in prison. Uh, but boy, if he can do bad for them like he does us, we may turn this thing around. You talk about regeneration. Oh, wow. Come on, get out some things. Oh, we need to pray for 
for our President Obama. I don't know who's, you know what, the problem, I will tell you what his problem is. He's not listening to God, he's listening to men. Yeah. Yeah. He's not doing what trying. If he did what he said, I believe before he got into the president's office, I think he wanted to do right. He said he was for family. He said he was for marriage. He said he was for freedom. He said he, he would be an open policy to everybody. And you know, when he got in office, he began listening to the wrong substance, and he totally turned his platform around. Folks, if you're going to listen to men, there's only going to be a few men that care for you and love you. But if you listen to God, if you listen to God, if you listen to God, more people are going to understand. Because I believe this, there are more people listening to God than they are men. If we would just allow God, right? How many like to listen to God? Yeah. Well, I just have a little picture here because I, got, I don't have a whole lot of time. Verse 6, how be it we speak what? Wisdom among them that are perfect. Wow, who's here perfect? I'm letting it all down. I let my hair down today. I let my shirt down today. Oh, I hope I don't let you down. I'll be in real bad trouble. <laughs> How do we speak wisdom among them that are perfect? Have you ever known anyone perfect? I don't know one man I know that's reached that perfection state. But I like it. I, I've heard preachers preach, well, God has touched me and anointed me and God has raised me up. And you'll never get that far. You'll never be as anointed as I am. But God has blessed me. I am. But I appreciate Father. You know, Father says, I'm going on a journey. But he says, look, I don't want to go by myself. Father says, he wants you to be blessed. You to be blessed. You to be lifted. You to be anointed. I appreciate Father. He wants you to reach the adult spiritual level of perfection. And listening to man will never be right. Listening to man will never be perfect. Listening to man, we can never be mature. But listening to the principles of the holy word of God, we can be what God wants us to be. And that is a perfect, full-grown, mature child of God. You keep walking? No, I don't feel like walking. You know, I've had enough walk. I'm going to sit down. I'm going to, I'm going to let Lucy walk. You know what happened? When you, there's no such thing. In the tabernacle, there were no chairs. Did you know that? There was no chairs. There was the word, the bread, the fire, the pillar, the blood sacrifice, but there was no place to sit down. Once you get a hold of God, and in order for Him to get you to a completed stage... You have to continue walking. If you wanted to get to New York on foot, what's the fastest way to get there if you're on foot? To keep walking. If you stop, every time you stop, you lost time. Keep walking. Keep walking. Keep walking. I wish you could have met my dad. He walked. His head got there a mile before his feet. <laughs> and he was so when I was young, I used to say, Dad, Dad, slow down. I'd hold his hand. He'd be dragging me. Come on, son. We've got to get there. Come on. And with God, God is, is a God that is so powerful enough that when a sheep gets out of the fold, when a sheep keeps breaking loose to the fence, you know what Jesus said? He goes out to the lamb, takes the little lamb, and he breaks its leg. With a broken leg, he can no longer crawl through the fence. With a broken leg, he can no longer escape from the fold. But Jesus said he no longer just breaks the leg, but while the leg of the lamb is healing, he carries it. Jesus never stopped walking, but the one who couldn't walk now, he's carrying. So if you ever, Robert, Robert crashed and totaled out his truck this week. Didn't get injured, but he had no transportation. Guess what, Robert? God's carrying him. When well, you've done all that you can do, you can't do no more. You can't press any harder. You can't give any more. What do you do? Just let God carry you. There's sometimes I've wept, I've fallen out to God, and I said, God, you know, I just can't make it. I can't go. I was working with Robert this week and I was up on a little roof. There was about this much room between the top of a room and that big office up there and the ceiling. And I was just 
exhausted physically, mentally, emotionally, and pulling these big boards apart. My body just gave up, and I, I, I climbed up on the roof, and Robert said, we'll pull this, this board off. Right, Jess? Right, Jess? I went out. I just laid there and went to sleep for a couple of minutes. My physical body got out. I said, God, I can't do anymore. He said, let me carry you. Now be careful because, you know, the first sentence here says, let not your face stand in the wisdom of men. We think that men can't influence you. Men are so influential on your life. My daughter begged me. I got home Thursday night, I think. No, Friday night. One night we stay here till 8 o'clock. I got home like 9 o'clock. My daughter Ashley said, Dad, I'm going to go to a movie and I want you to go with me. I don't feel like I'm going to fall asleep. She said, you have to go with me. I read the book and now I want to see the movie. Something about a fall of the stars. Have you seen that or heard of it? It's about a young couple who fall in love. They both have cancer. One dies and goes on before. Such a sad, sad story. We're sitting in the theater and all the young people, young girls, mostly girls, but some guys around it are crying in the theater. And I'm holding my own. I'm... <laughs> And the movie's over, all the sadness, the so sad part of this movie. Both of them dying with cancer, struggling with chemotherapy, struggling with, with uh, good days, bad days where they almost died. And one day the one young man gets a treatment and they find out it's incurable, there's nothing he can do and shortly he dies. But before he died, they fell in love. And they talked about how pure and sweet their love was. And he died. The story closes with a very sad. We get in the car. I live 15 minutes from the theater. Let me tell you how man's influence can influence you. My daughter, Ashley, cried profusely the whole way home. I had to hold her in. And I kept saying, Ashley, it was just a movie. That guy's still alive. That guy's doing well. Ashley, she's not hurt. They were just acting. And I mean, I thought she was going to jump out of the car. Oh, God. She just broke all the pieces for 15 minutes. I took her home, and I think she even went to her room and cried a little more after that. Listen, it wasn't real. But it influenced her. It touched her heart. It touched her spirit so she could not control her weeping. Be careful how the archangel and men can influence you. He can touch the very depths of your heart and you think it's real. That's why you've got to stick with the word of God. That's why you've got to know the principle. That's why you've got to walk with God. Oh. You can come up and tell me that that poster, this pulpit, that plan is God. You know what? It's okay. Somebody tried to prove me recently there was no God. I said, you come too late. I talked to him this morning. <laughs> I know he's alive because him and I had a good conversation this morning. But no, God doesn't exist. Hey. Okay, somebody took care of my headache yesterday. Somebody helped me out with my job yesterday. Somebody spared my life when I flatlined in the emergency room and God restored my heart back to life again. Somebody was in that room. You come too late to tell me there's no God. Man can say there isn't. Man can say he has no influence. Man can say that he can't wash your sins away. Man can say that he can't take the pain out of your heart. Man can say he can't heal America. Man can say that he can't restore our freedom to America. But I want to tell you, he's alive today. You know how I know he's alive? I'm walking with him, folks. He's right here in this room. You can feel him here. Just like you can feel each other's hands. I can feel God in this place. Oh, when they were talking about God, God was sitting over here telling me, Say amen, that's good stuff. <laughs> Sometimes you're sitting there, God has to talk to you. Wow. Let's read the rest of this. Verse 7. But we speak the wisdom of God. How? In a mystery. Why is it a mystery? Because you're not God. But you're a child of God. Even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto glory. Which, verse 8, let's read this. Which none of the princes of this world knew. You see, God has a plan. The archangel think he took God's plan over when he got Eve and Adam to fall. He thinks when he got them to follow his way that he's got things under control. But archangel, I got news for you. I'm not Adam and Eve. I'm a child of God. 
I've been washed in the blood. I've been sanctified by the Spirit. I've been anointed by the Holy Ghost. And you can too. You can have it all. <laughs> but I'm not walking according to the archangel. I'm not walking according to a man. I'm walking in the power of God. Everybody say, I'm walking. I'm walking. I'm walking. In the power of God, power which none of the principalities in verse 8 of this world knew. For had they known, if they knew who he was, they would not have crucified him on Calvary. Yeah. See, the devil thought when he took him to the cross, the devil says, Oh, we got him now. When they took Jesus and bound him and took him to Caiaphas' house, Satan, the old archangel, was saying, I got Jesus. He can't do nothing. Listen, it was just like putting Father in prison. He wasn't doing a bad thing. He was doing a good thing. Because now Jesus can prove how much he loved the whole world. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Verse 9, but as it is written, here we're going to close with. I have, let's read this together, verse 9. I has not, not seen, seen nor ear heard. heard. Neither, neither listen, heard. not only can you see and hear it, it hasn't even entered in the heart of man. The things which God hath prepared for them that love Him. You see a little building here that God has blessed us with. You see some plants here. You see some seats. You see a new PA system. And you can see a few things. But let me tell you, and you can even hear the music through the PA system. But you have not seen what the glory of God wants to do in this place. We're just touching the surface. As these two were speaking today, it was like I was drinking from a fresh fountain. And God was saying, you're only tasting. You're just tasting a little bit. Wait till I pour out my spirit until you can't control it. Every head closed, every head bowed, and every eye closed. Father, today I thank you for every tender heart, every spirit that is submitting, submitting to you. I thank you because sometimes our walk seems impossible. Sometimes it seems like a rugged road that uh, we can't make it. Some mornings we, I've heard people say, I just didn't even want to wake up the next morning from my burdens and from my stress. I don't know how to answer my own needs and what I'm going to do. But Father, today we can put all of our hope, all of our trust in you. For you know how to take care of us. And we haven't even seen the greatness that you want to do. I have not seen, ear have not heard. All oh, the glory that you're going to bless. You're going to do some miraculous healing here. You're going to bring people in that have never dreamed knowing the power of God. Some of us that sit here are going to go so high in the spirit that we never dreamed we would feel so powerful in you. Today, God, I ask that you touch everyone. If you're here today, you have a special need in your life, why don't you just stand up? Don't even say what it is, but if you have a special need, why don't you just stand right where you are? Whatever it is, just stand up. God knows. He already knows your heart. He already knows your needs. And, and greater, let me say this, He's already got the answer. He already has the answer. We're just showing Him we're ready to receive the answer. Anyone else? God knows it. It can be spiritual. It can be a problem in family, a child. Maybe a neighbor that you're struggling with. You know, you've just been working with and working with. And you've done all you can do? Then let Jesus, let Father Spirit come around for them. Wrap them in love. Wrap them in power. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You that are standing, I'm going to ask you to do me a favor. Could you just lift your hands to heaven? Just lift your hand up to heaven and say, God, I'm, I'm opening my heart to you. You know my need already. I know you have the answer. You have a special answer to my need. Now, God, I accept what you have for me. Do you accept that? Sometimes a blessing has requirements. Do you accept what God has for you? Lord, I accept it in your precious name. Amen. Amen.
on how to walk this walk. Someone can tell us to walk because we need to understand how do we walk? How do we have faith in you? How do we have a pure, wholesome marriage? I thank you for the instructions that we got today. Let us take it home with us. Let us take it into our lives. Every step of this walk that we have, let us take all these precepts and all of your word that we receive through today and make it a part of our walk with you, Father. Because one day we're going to be walking and we just reach up and touch your hand. One day we're going to sit down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Wow, we can sit down. No longer just talk about the presence, but be in the presence of our mighty God. We thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Let's give him some praise, can we? Come on, give him some praise in the house. Somebody say amen. 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 Amen.